Okay, uh, another real world example which sometimes um, comes up in life is uh, the following. You know, someone is desperately studying on for that last, last exam and hoping for the grade. You know, and so you can just imagine what it looks like. You know, the person just falls asleep in the textbook, and while they're falling asleep in that textbook, they start dreaming and they start saying, gee whiz, I got an 80 on the first test, an 82 on the second test, a 94, but then a 71. And there's that one more test. And that poor person's trying so hard to get a 90, uh, to get an 85 average. That's all he wants. I just want to be, maybe B plus if the teacher's a little bit lenient. That's all I want out of life. What do I have to get on this test in order to get an 85 final average? That's the question that our hero dreams about while that person is trying to study and fall asleep. Well, okay, let's think about this together. And see if we can make some progress on this. OK, well, what would you do? Well, we know that there are going to be five grades. There's going to be, well, there is an 80. There's an 82. There's a 94. There's a 71. And then there's a mystery, a mystery grade. That's the one that hasn't happened yet. And what do I know? I want the average of all five of these exams to equal 85. And the question is, what kind of grade would our hero have to get on this last exam in order to have an average of 85? Well, in fact, if you write it out like this, it really just leads right to what you want to do. Because what do I want to do? I want to compute the average. How do you compute the average? You add up all the, the numbers you have and divide by the number of numbers. In this case, we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, and the last one is 5. So we'll divide by 5. So what do we see? Well, I'll set up the following equation. And actually, you know, just to show you that unknowns can be any old thing, I have 80 plus 82 plus 94 plus 71 plus, you could put in x. You could put in uh, g for grade. But you know what? I'm going to keep the question mark. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at that. How whimsical. And then this will equal, after I divide through by 5, I want that to equal 85. OK, so what do I do? I want to solve for a question mark. Well, first of all, all these numbers I can add up. And if you add them up, if you add 80 and 82, that's 162. And you add 94 and 71. And I think you see 327. And then I have that question mark. Divide the whole thing by 5. And that equals 85. So I multiply everything through by 5 to clear that 5 denominator. So on this side, it just cancels the 5. And I'm just left with 327 plus question mark. And that equals 5 times 85, which is 425. OK, well then I subtract the 327 to this side. And what do I see? I see that the question mark equals 98. So in fact, what I see is this student should uh, get exactly a 98 on the last exam so that the average over all five of them will be an 85. And what is that? I would say that is a solid B in my book. But if there's a little grade inflation, there may be a little plus there. Anyway, the answer to the question is students should get a 98. Not a big deal when you're computing averages. You just sort of add up all the terms and divide by the total number, not just the four grades, but in fact this mystery grade as well. Set that equal to 85. You're all set. OK, good luck on your test.